Well, the Mammoth Community Water District is asking everyone to be mindful of their water use and seek ways to voluntarily reduce their demand by 10%. Level one restrictions are still in effect for all Mammoth Community Water District customers. No outdoor watering between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. is allowed unless you apply water by hand with a shutoff nozzle on the hose. Now, in addition to the two dry winters and a hot summer, a press release states that the Mammoth Lakes Community Water District is shutting down one of the water treatment plants to complete a construction project that will improve the treatment capabilities of the facility. Now, the last step of the project requires that the treatment plant be shut down for a few months while the treatment upgrade are implemented. Reducing your indoor and outdoor water demand will alleviate the pressure on the remaining treatment plants during this temporary shutdown. A 10% reduction in your water demand or saving about 7 to 10 gallons a day can be met by making small changes. For example, such as uh, turning off your shower while you soap up, only running the clothes washer with a full load, or fixing a leaky faucet can each save about 15 gallons a day. Keeping a swimming pool covered save thir saves 30 gallons, and reducing your irrigation time by two minutes can save about 100 gallons, depending on the size of your landscape. Now, the Water District has a rebate program to help cover the cost of replacing water inefficient household toilets, shower heads, and clothes washers with high water efficient fixtures. You can visit the website mcwd.dst.ca.us to download the application and installing a water efficient toilet can save about eight gallons a day. Well, Steve Nelson has been named the Bureau of Land Management's Bishop Field Office Manager. The Bishop Field Office, Office manages over 750,000 acres of public land service and about 2 million acres of subsurface mineral estate in the Eastern Sierra. Nelson began his career with the BLM in 1987 and has served as manager of the Biophysical Resources Division in the Bishop Field Office since July 2008. Steve and his wife Susan have lived in the Bishop area since 1988. Steve holds a bachelor's degree in natural resources management with a concentration in fisheries and wildlife management from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. His previous positions with the BLM include wildlife biologist, geographic information systems technical specialist, supervisory wildlife biologist, and supervisory natural resource specialist. A California native, Steve Nelson was raised in a family that taught him to respect and value public lands. Steve said, quote, I am honored and excited to have been appointed the new Bishop Field Manager. The Eastern Sierra is a great place to live and work, and the sense of community and the quality of public land resources in Inyo and Mono counties are second to none. I look forward to building upon our existing partnerships and working with the public to care for the public lands and resources that I have been entrusted to manage, end quote. Steve Nelson replaces Bernadette Lovato, who accepted a job as BLM Carson City District Manager. Well, we have an update on the Aspen fire that's burning in the Sierra National Forest on the west side of the Sierra, about 20 to 25 miles southwest of Mammoth Lakes. Smoke has been clogging the air in the eastern Sierra since the lightning caused fire began on July 22nd. This video we're looking at was shot in Mammoth on Tuesday shows the area thick with smoke. Now conditions were better Wednesday morning before the smoke again choked Mammoth Lakes by the afternoon. Now the Aspen fire has burned 14,332 acres, 35% contained. Nearly 1,800 personnel were working the Aspen fire this week. There have been two injuries and the cost to date is $10.6 million. Now Dr. Richard Johnson, the Inyo and Mono County Health Officer, offered some tips to help deal with the smoky conditions, including stay indoors with windows and doors closed tightly. Turn the air conditioning on to recirculate or use ceiling or portable fans, but not anything that sucks outside air into the home. Also, avoid tobacco smoke, frying or broiling foods, burning candles, vacuuming, and using paint, solvents, and cleaning products, adhesives, 
indoors. Now you should also keep a good supply of medication available and have a supply of non-perishable groceries that do not require cooking. And keep your airways moist by drinking plenty of water. Masks will not work to filter out the small particles. Also, if you have symptoms of lung or heart disease that may be related to excess smoke exposure, including repeated coughing, shortness of breath, or difficulty breathing, wheezing, chest tightness or pain, palpitations, nausea, or unusual fatigue or lightheadedness, you should contact your health care provider. Also, some additional considerations. If you are in a high risk group and sensitive to the effects of smoke with ongoing symptoms, you may want to consider, along with your health care provider, the option of leaving the area for a week or two, allowing your symptoms to improve while the smoke clears. And we can only hope that that will be sooner than later. We'll be back with more news.